Howdy folks, Al Correx here, and welcome to Thoughts from the Inner Sphere, episode 40. And today we're going to be talking about the Enforcer, the 50-ton mech. That is not too bad, not so great, gets the job done. And we're going to just talk about some of that. Let's just roll along and delve into it. Now, the F Enforcer, 50 tons. Now it's a 464 mech has jump jets all right let's check something off right there that means it can displace and get places a little quicker than someone would say like the centurion now it carries 12 heat sinks to help dissipate that heat because you know you're gonna have a little bit of problem with that if you fire that heavy auto cannon ac10 and that large laser at the same time you're gonna create some heat and when you create a little bit of heat yeah you're gonna need some heat sinks to dissipate it so that takes care of that problem. Carries 144 points of armor, which is 9 tons, which is 1.5 tons short of maxing out. Eh, 11 would put it at, you know, maxed completely out, but basically for half a ton, you're getting one point of armor. Not worth it. So, yeah, you just. So another ton and a half, all right? Would be almost considered 100%, 99.9%. All right. Now, it carries an AC-10 in the right arm with one ton of ammo. That's eh, kind of a problem. One large laser in the left arm, a small laser in the left torso, and the jump jets in the legs. All right. What do I do with this mech? Well, the Enforcer gets its use because it's a pretty good kind of a fire support mech in direct fire. Obviously, you have no LRMs. Like, if you had a choice, if you want to do a lot of uh, fire support missions, take the, the Centurion. Now, if you like to do a lot of direct fire, you're not really into the indirect stuff while you're closing or shooting over buildings. Because who needs to shoot over a building when you can just jump over the building and shoot behind somebody? All right? Okay. So... There's one of the benefits of the Enforcer. It can get around. It can jump from over a building and go over a line of trees or jump into a line of trees to get better cover or behind a hill. You name it. So jump jets make it a little bit more versatile. But, you know, you're looking at, what, two tons that go into those jump jets, which could be weapons like the... Um, centurion has like medium lasers all right but it's here nor there you know we're just talking about the enforcer here now what i like to do with this thing is like i said i prefer to use the uh enforcer as kind of like a flanker if you run with uh let's say some heavies and or you're running against some heavies and this mech is seeing he's Ripping armor off. This is a good mech for rip because you know you, at range you can do 18 points of damage. That's nothing to seize that. You know, if you hit somebody in like a right torso with 18 points of damage and you're a heavy mech, you know it happened because you know you're going to lose some armor because that's just it. Now, if you look at the armor value here on this one, if you hit another enforcer in a right torso with 18. You have one point that goes in, and you're going to have a chance critical. All right, that's just your standard book enforcer. So, if you put it all in the same spot, you can do some good. And what I like to do it is a kind of a flanking maneuver: is ripping armor off. And if I see you have, let's like I said, a right torso that's been opened up, I am going to try and maneuver myself to get into the right side and try to focus, funnel that damage into a torso area. Forcing you to if you want that flank to be covered you're gonna to have to turn and you might be turning and Opening up like a rear arc or another flank uh, left torso or left flank to uh, other to funnel in and That could be a bad deal for you and If you're trying to minimize damage into a wounded area Or if you're thinking about trying to do that, you know, it's a good mech to do it to uh, tear our Tear, ah, can't even say it. Tear off armor. Say that ten times fast. Now, <clears throat> let's look at some of the variants here. There's not very many that they talk about here in the book. 
Uh, one of the worst flaws is the number of shells. It, yeah, that's like I said, it only carries 10, 10, or 10 shots with that AC-10. And yeah, you want to have at least two tons. So 20 shots is good enough to get you through an entire battle, usually if that's what you're doing, like a pickup game or something like that. And basically, you're going to have to get rid of the, what they do, get rid of the small laser and another um, half ton. Yeah, you're, you're taking off more armor to get another ton of ammo. And I've never been a fan of ripping armor off something just so I can do something better. And that's pretty much the only variant that they, they talk about here. Now, if I'm going to do something with this thing, I would be more inclined to get rid of either downsize the AC-10 to an AC-5 and take that extra tonnage. You know, you're talking two tons, and then you don't have to worry about you know 20 shots out of an AC-5. Uh, yeah, you're that's not that a bad, not a bad deal at all. Now you're losing five points of damage, but then you could turn around. And add either a ton into your armor and or medium laser or you know one way or the other now another thing I always like doing is take that uh, same mech and then just totally take off that um, AC 10 now you're you're gonna have a capital weapon in there anyway and replace it with another large laser so you have two large lasers all right so but you're going to be doing 16 points of heat so you're going to need at least four more heat sinks to you know make up the difference so uh, if you drop the uh, AC 10 to a large laser that puts us 13 so that eight so you got eight tons to play with that's a lot of tonnage so you could put let's say five into uh, heat sinks and that leaves you three left over so put another ton and a half into armor and then that leaves you another ton and a half left over take a small laser downgrade that or upgrade it to a medium laser and put two medium lasers on there you go so now you have two large lasers two medium lasers on a mech with 17 heat sinks that could work great works great up close and if you decide to shut off one meat shut off one large laser in favor of two medium lasers so you're looking at 14 you're not going to heat up you could even jump this thing and not heat up much but one so that's like yeah you could do 18 heat that way by jumping four i'll i can live with one point of heat you know you can do that for three turns and not have any depriment and then you know by the third or fourth turn you know you're gonna have to shut something off to cool off a little bit but you know that's not a big deal and some people might argue that's getting away from the whole concept of the uh, the mech itself but I feel like it's a little bit better especially you know I'm looking at this from a uh, standpoint of the mercenary commander now if you're a house troop and you can't do anything with it you know that you're stuck with it you're just you know you have to deal with it but as a mercenary commander, I'd rather have two large lasers and two medium lasers on a mech to do the job instead of uh, just, you know, worrying about that ammo or carrying around a heavy weapon. And in the long run, you might be better off because then you can use it as a flanker. Yeah, you lose a little bit of slight damage. You know, you're losing two points at range comparatively. But I can live with two points less damage and I don't have to worry about myself blowing up. Or if you're doing an extended campaign where you're not going to be seeing a, a rearming depot for a long time in a campaign, this make, would make a really good long range uh, support. You know, you have a lance that is nothing but energy. They could go out and do extended uh, uh, recon missions or operations that you know you don't have to uh, come back to the lines for expanded extended period of time and do a, make a good raider out of it you know that's one thing i always like the whole idea of. 
but when you only have one ton and you get 10 shots in one engagement you could be uh, click and dry and then you're just carrying around 12 tons of uh, auto cannon that's doing you no good so I'm not a big fan of that old idea at all so now what other things could you do with this mech like I said uh, displacing pretty good getting around you know with jump jets and you're not worrying about any type of uh, minimum range with this thing you could jump in behind somebody you know you're gonna cook yourself a little bit and get into someone's rear arc and, and have a good chance of uh, hitting somebody in the rear let's say the center torso rear and this guy is only carrying four ton or four points of armor you put an AC 10 into somebody's rear unless it's a uh, let's just take a look here uh, a Jaeger Jaeger's got five Thunderbolt carries 11 so it could handle Thunderbolt could handle the rear shot but would it handle the large laser in addition you know the seven which is the most common number you roll you know hit the center torso uh archer you're basically gonna do 10 points it has 10 you know you're gonna punch through so when you start looking at some of the larger heavies but if you get in behind let's say centurions carry seven and let's see where the hunchback hunchback shouldn't be very much yep that's five so you start getting into some of these lighter mechs now uh, you're going to be doing some uh getting in there and start tearing up that center that um uh, internal structure so those jump jets can have some options available you know either jump behind somebody go over cover get behind uh cover into cover over a building you know i was just thinking of this the variant i made would make a really good uh street fighter yeah there you go if you do uh street fights all right now if you have any questions about anything let me know hey now that you're towards the end of the video this is a new mic let me know how this new mic is sounding how you know good it is taking care of hopefully some of the problems i've been having with it with the other mic i was using so a little bit of feedback on that so if you listen to all the way at the end some of you may not but some of you do let me know down in the comments below like and subscribe and let me know what your thoughts are on the enforcer i like the mech it's pretty good all right we'll talk to you later